Hi everyone, this is the introduction to quadratic functions. This is all the vocab that we're going to use for this next unit. So a quadratic function, uh, we've actually been doing, uh, it's anything that has x squared in it. The one thing that makes it a function is now we're going to be dealing with the graphs. So we're going to have to deal with y equals x squared, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. You notice that a quadratic function always has a squared component to it. A parabola is what we call the line that it creates, that U shape. It's called a parabola. In a graph, we have various parts. The axis of symmetry, that is where this U shape is cut right in half. Okay? If you uh, remember anything about symmetry from geometry, it's where something is reflected. So if you notice, this point and this point are both two units away from that axis of symmetry. It cuts it right in half. Okay, so it cuts the graph in half. Okay, um, the vertex is found on that axis of symmetry. The vertex is that bottom most point or the top most point. It's where this direction changes. Okay, um, and it's x comma y, okay, and it's where the parabola changes shape. Okay, we're going to discuss um, how to find where the vertex is later, but the vertex is just that bottom most part there, okay? The y-intercept hasn't changed from when you were graphing y equals mx plus b to uh, a parabola like this. It's where it crosses the y-axis. Okay. Now, uh, quadratic functions sometimes have a maximum value and sometimes have a minimum value. And what I'm talking about is that vertex. So if we see this, this parabola is upside down. The vertex is right there. That's what we say is the maximum value. It's the y value of the vertex because the y is how high it goes. Um, and it happens when the parabola is upside down. Okay, it's how high that parabola goes. Just like this, the minimum is the bottom most part of the parabola. Again, it's the y value of the work vertex. And it happens when the parabola opens up. So that's all the different parts of a parabola. And then we're also going to talk about things called vertex form and standard form. They're the two ways we graph these things. Vertex form we've actually done already in our parent functions unit. It takes the form of, I forgot the a here, y equals a parentheses x minus h plus k, where h and k are the vertex. Okay. Standard form we've seen with the quadratic equation. Instead of 0 equals now, it's y equals because we're graphing. 
and it's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And we're going to be dealing with this first and this second, because this is a little bit more complicated. Um, and then the only other thing that we're going to talk about is uh, roots, okay? Um, and we actually have been talking about roots. We, I just haven't used the word root, roots before. Roots are call, also called zeros, and they're also called solutions. So uh, in the last unit, we took something like this equation, x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0, and we would factor it out. We would say, okay, um, minus 3, what two numbers multiply to that? 3 and 1. Uh, 1 has to be negative, and because I want a positive 2, I would say that's a negative 1. So I can factor this out into x plus 3 x minus 1 equals 0. So then when I split it off, I would get x equals minus 3 if I'm solving it, and x equals 1. Though That's my solutions. We did that factoring, we did that using quadratic formula. Right now, we are talking, we're translating that to a graph, and we call those roots or zeros. Do you notice that this graph right here crosses the x-axis at negative 3 and 1. That is the same thing as this. Okay? So, all of these words mean the same thing. And we describe them using what we call the discriminant. Okay? The discriminant is the stuff inside the square root with the quadratic formula. It's the b squared minus 4ac. It helps us tell what's going on in there. Are we going to get some good numbers? Are we going to get big long decimals? Are we going to have i? Um, so the discriminant says if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, means it's a positive number, and it's a perfect square. So we're talking about 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, anything that I can find the square root of. It says it has two rational roots. Okay, That means um, those solutions could be 1 and 3. It could be 1 half and 3 halves, Okay, where it crosses. If you look at this example right here, these have two rational roots because they cross at 7, 0 and 11, 0. Those are my roots, and that's two rational roots. Okay? Um, if b squared minus 4ac isn't a perfect square, so if we get like uh, 51, um, 50, where we have to break down the square roots, it's not as easy where... Uh, not able to find the specific number. And you notice that this graph right here, okay, we don't know where they cross exactly because they're not on a line. So that's if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, but not a perfect square. The next one is if b squared minus 4ac equals 0, there's one rational root. What happens is the parabola kind of moves up, and that vertex, that vertex is right there, right on the x-axis. So both of these graphs have uh, vertexes right on the x-axis. So that means that has a one rational root. And again, this is just classifying how it does. Okay. And the next step is when we have b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. This is where we get those negatives inside the, the square root. Okay, That's where like net square root of negative 49 is 7i. Okay? They're imaginary, but a complex number. Do you see that this graph right here doesn't even come close to the x-axis? 
That is an imaginary root, okay? That's what we call it because the parabola doesn't cross the x-axis, so we have to kind of imagine it, all right? So let me give you a couple examples here, okay? Example one, 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. A is 2, B is 5, C is 3. So all I do, 5 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3. 25 minus 24, which is 1. Can I find the square root of 1? Yes. Square root of 1 is 1. That's a perfect square. So I know that there are two rational roots. The next one, a is 3, b is negative 2, c is 5. Negative 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times 5. 4 minus 60, negative 56. Every time I have a negative, two complex roots. You're not solving anything. You're just classifying them. A is 3. B is negative 6. C is 3. Negative 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times 3. 36 minus 36 equals 0. Okay, that means the square root goes away, so there's going to be one rational root. And the last one, a is 2, b is negative 3, c is negative 4, negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2, times negative 4, 9 plus 32 equals 41. I can't find the square root of that. That is not a perfect square. So that means I have two irrational roots. So the discriminant is just used to describe how things, uh, how the roots interact with each other. You're just classifying them um, and it tells you does it hit the x-axis, does it not, that sort of thing.